Ever pondered how a disease like COVID-19, the flu or RSV can sneak into your body without you even noticing? It all comes down to the fascinating, albeit somewhat unsettling, science of airborne transmission. Imagine walking into a room where someone smoked a cigarette hours ago. Even though the smoker is long gone, you can still smell the lingering smoke. That's because tiny particles from the cigarette smoke remain suspended in the air. Similarly, diseases like COVID-19, flu and RSV can spread through tiny particles or aerosols that float in the air. These aerosols can carry viral particles, which can then be inhaled by others, leading to infection. Now picture this. You're in a room with someone who's infected, but you never interact with them. Yet, you can still get infected. Why? Because these aerosols containing viral particles can float in the air for hours. It's a bit like a game of chance, with the virus playing the odds to find a new host. So, how can we protect ourselves from these invisible threats? The answer lies in proper ventilation and air cleaning. By ensuring a constant flow of fresh air, at least 50 cubic meters per hour per person, we can help remove these hazardous particles as quickly as possible. You can check whether the air is sufficiently refreshed by using a CO2 meter. In outdoor air, CO2 is around 430 ppm, parts per million. Exhaled air contains about 38,000 to 40,000 ppm CO2. The higher the CO2 measured in a room, the less the air was refreshed. At 800 ppm, about 1% of the air is second-hand air coming from someone else's lungs. At 1200 ppm, it is already 2%, and at 2000 ppm, it reaches 4%. Research in Belgian classrooms showed that the CO2 level in half of the classrooms easily exceeds 2000 ppm CO2, with maxima of 8000 ppm. Not only does this significantly increase the risk of infection among teachers and pupils, increasing absenteeism for both, several research has also shown that it has a very negative impact on cognitive performance. The higher the CO2, the higher the probability of infection. A good CO2 meter has an NDIR sensor, for example, the Aronet 4 and the TFA Dostman air control. Additionally, using HEPA filters or self-made Corsi boxes with MERV-13 filters can further clean the air and reduce the risk of infection. You may have heard about larger droplets that fall to the ground within seconds being an infection route. However, there's no scientific evidence to back this up. It's quite simple to understand why. Just like a bullet, a droplet has only one chance to hit you in the eyes, mouth or nostrils. In contrast, airborne particles can remain in the air for hours, increasing the likelihood of being inhaled. Interestingly, the advice based on the droplet dogma to keep a distance of one and a half meters or six feet does have an impact on the infection risk by aerosols. The further away you are, the more diluted the aerosols become, which lowers your exposure and hence your risk of infection. In summary, understanding how airborne diseases spread is crucial in our fight against them. Diseases like COVID-19, flu and RSV can spread through aerosols that float in the air and you can be infected by someone you never met. To protect ourselves, we need to ensure proper ventilation and air cleaning. While the risk from larger droplets is not scientifically proven, maintaining distance can still help by diluting the concentration of aerosols. Remember, knowledge is power and in this case it's a power that can keep us healthy.